The vast cosmos is, as far as we know, endless, and it is within this vast endlessness that we search for meaning, for purpose, for inspiration and serendipity. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three galactic discoveries. Astronomers show what shockwaves 60 times larger than the Milky Way look like. Cosmic collisions and grand colourful explosions are a staple in space. Despite being a vacuum, space can be as colourful and bright as it is unknown and elusive. The larger and more spectacular the explosion or supernova, the more excited researchers become upon its discovery. Recently, a brand new burst of colour and a spectacle transpired, an occurrence dating back to one billion years ago still showcasing itself in the night skies. Despite the tremendous amount of time that has passed since its dawn, the spectacle is not only still very much visible, but it has been measured to be 60 times the size of our entire galaxy. This splendid shockwave occurred when two clusters of galaxies collided into what is known as a supercluster. Abel 3667, the name dubbed to the supercluster, is one of the most extraordinary events which we know of to have happened in the universe since the Big Bang. Professor Francesco de Gasparin of the University of Hamburg conducted various calculations which proved Abel 3667 to have been insanely powerful. It is believed that Abel 3667 happened anywhere from 1 billion to 200 million years ago. Regardless, the supercluster formed a shockwave of electrons which are still travelling at speeds of 1500 kilometers a second, otherwise known as Mach 2.5. These particles, as they traverse the cosmos, pass the magnetic fields in space, which then are reflected back in radio waves. De Gasparin used these radio waves in his calculations alongside his colleagues. The research group used the up-and-coming Meerkat telescope that is building steady popularity within astronomical circles. However, radio waves could not provide them with enough information by themselves about the extent of the shockwave as research was additionally conducted at the XXM Neutron X-ray Observatory to focus further on Abel 3667. The combined results from the various observatories helped scientists understand the situation and shockwave in a far better light than any prior speculation could have. According to de Gasparin, the galaxy clusters were much more complex than we initially thought. The shockwaves themselves looked like filaments that traced the location of giant magnetic field lines. The full extent of their research is not yet known. Mysterious cosmic flashes pinpointed to a surprising location in space. Elusive flashes across the night sky have been spotted by scientists. These mysterious blasts of light have been recognized as fast radio bursts. With the use of radio telescopes, astronomers were able to find that these bursts occur within ancient stars. These fast radio bursts are extremely erratic and short-lived. First uncovered in 2007, they have been a marvel for astronomers since their discovery, only able to be spotted via radio telescopes. The energy released by a singular flash equals the energy the Sun unleashes in an entire day. These bursts are random and all around, from all sorts of various galaxies. Hundreds of these flashes occur daily. Franz Christen and Kenzie Nemo, scientists from Astron in the Netherlands, have assembled a team to try and analyze this phenomenon deeper. Through their research in January of 2020, they discovered that a constant origin of these flashes is in the Ursa Major constellation. According to Kirsten, we wanted to look for clues to the burst's origins. Using many radio telescopes together, we knew we could pinpoint the source's location in the sky with extreme precision. That gives the opportunity to see what the local neighborhood of a fast radio burst looks like. Cosmic measurements were taken by the EVN, European VLBI network telescopes from various European countries such as Germany, Sweden, Latvia and Poland as well as others. Once they finally gathered the results, they were shocked to find the location of the radio flashes was the one place they never anticipated, in the close-by galaxy of Messier 81, known more commonly as M81, which lies an estimated 12 million light-years away, making it the closest known source of these radio bursts to our little blue planet. 
Furthermore, M81 has the globular cluster which is a huge grouping of archaic stars. Nemo stated, it's amazing to find fast radio bursts from a globular cluster. This is a place in space where you only find old stars. Further out in the universe, fast radio bursts have been found in places where stars are much younger. This had to be something else. The leading theory is that magnetar's dense remains of supernovae that are highly magnetic are the main sources of galactic radio bursts. Jason Hessels of the University of Amsterdam and part of the Astron Radio Burst project claims, we expect magnetars to be shiny and new and definitely not surrounded by old stars. So if what we're looking at here really is a magnetar, then it can't have been formed from a young star exploding. There has to be another way. As such, the current belief is that the magnetar must have been created by a white dwarf once its mass became so great it caved in on itself. This theory is backed by Kirsten. Strange things happen in the multi-billion year life of a tight cluster of stars. Here we think we're seeing a star with an unusual story. Not all stars become supernovas. Some, like our Sun, is going to and will develop into white dwarfs. These small yet dense cosmic objects shine bright and there are many such stars in the ancient cluster. According to Mohit Bardwaj of the Canadian McGill University, if one of the white dwarfs can catch enough extra mass from its companion, it can turn into an even denser star, known as a neutron star. That's a rare occurrence, but in a cluster of ancient stars, it's the simplest way of making fast radio bursts. This discovery might reshape how astronomers understand magnetars and stars. Further research into these radio bursts might unlock a myriad of new extraordinary findings. New Galaxy Protocluster Discovered in Early Universe Speaking of galactic clusters, scientists have uncovered a brand new protocluster which has been dubbed PHZ G2370014250, or simply G237. G237 possesses 63 galaxies, some of which are blue star forming and contain cosmic nuclei. But unfortunately, this galaxy is an entire 10.6 billion light years away, extremely far from us. Dr. Brenda Fry from the University of Arizona stated, This discovery is an important step toward reaching our ultimate goal, understanding the assembly of galaxy clusters, the most massive structures that exist in the universe. The protocluster was originally spotted using the ESA's Planck telescope during an ordinary all-sky scan when G237 appeared in infrared on the electromagnetic spectrum, showing itself for the very first time. As soon as they could, astronomers got to researching this enigma further with other telescopes. Dr. Fry and her team of astronomers utilized the Subaru telescope in Japan alongside the binocular telescope in Arizona to help with their research. Dr. Fry stated, you can think of galaxy protoclusters such as G237 as a galaxy shipyard in which massive galaxies are being assembled. Only this structure existed at a time when the galaxy was 3 billion years old. At the same time, the genealogy may be closer than you think. Because the universe is homogeneous and the same in all directions, we think that the Milky Way may have docked at a protocluster node similar to G237 when it was very young. The team's initial observations suggested that the rate of forming stars in the cluster was insanely high, and impossibly so. The data they gathered greatly confused the researchers who struggled to make sense of how that could be. The data showed that the G237 cluster was creating stars more than 10,000 times at the rate of our own Milky Way. The reason why this felt impossible to the astronomers is simple. At such speeds, the protocluster would have surely used up its entire supply of stellar fuel and should have settled, just as the Virgo supercluster had done. Dr. Fry explained the protocluster as, Each of the 63 galaxies discovered so far in G237 was like a star factory in overdrive. It's as if the galaxies were working overtime to assemble stars. The rate of production was unsustainable. At such a pace, the supply chains are expected to break in the near future and in a way that permanently shuts down the galaxy shipyard. Hydrogen gas is required for stars to upkeep the production, meaning there had to be a continuous source for this to occur. 
Dr. Fry claims it would require an efficient and unbroken supply chain that drew in unreasonably large amounts of fresh gas to fuel the star-forming factories. We don't know where that gas was coming from. However, they managed to unravel that the galaxy was partially corrupted. The observations took into consideration galaxies outside of the proto-cluster. Once this was corrected, the findings were far more realistic, yet still respectively high, reaching at the very least to 1,000 solar masses a year compared with our galaxy's one solar mass per year. Dr. Fry compares the correction to the shipyard allegory, stating it now seems that they found a successful galaxy shipyard that is working at a high efficiency to assemble galaxies and the stars within them, now that the hydrogen amount has been confirmed as sustainable for such a large production of stars and galaxies. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.